We love our pets, but although we're smitten with them, sometimes they really know how to embarrass us. Tonight on My Pet Shame, Ninja, the crazy clawing cat, Rupert, a pig with hoggishly bad breath, Dick and Phil, the stinky terrapins, and Hope, the Great Dane with a very itchy issue. Molly, Molly, Molly! <laughs> British pets are showing up the nation with their lavatorial habits, foul smells and very peculiar behaviour. For too long, we've kept our petty problems behind closed doors. Our clinic calls time on those embarrassing problems, with vet Mark Abraham on hand to prescribe a new approach. The first troublesome pet in need of attention is on her way. Northampton, Vicky Croucher got Ninja as a cute-looking kitten. But it wasn't long before the fluffy bundle gave way to a terror of talons. Ninja, no biting. Oh, wait. No. Ninja is a vicious little cat. No. Initially, when she arrived at mine, she was a very nervous little cat. It was sort of a, a few weeks after I got her that her behaviour started to develop. She's never really responded to no. Ninja, stay. She has times when she goes completely erratic for no reason. She growls, she snarls, she hisses and she spits. Ow, Ninja, no! Ow, she's got her claws right wrapped into my skin. Her favourite activity is to bite people. <laughs> I do feel that I've done everything within my power to try and change Ninja's behaviour and without some specialist help, I just don't feel anything's going to get solved. So Ninja by name and Ninja by nature. Will Vicky dare to let me meet her one cat fight club? Do you think we can get her out? Um, it's probably best if we don't. She's quite likely to be very violent. So show me what sort of things that she's done to you then. Um, I've got quite a lot of scars um, on you my can hands. You see them? They're not scratch marks, those are bite marks. And do they hurt? They, or did they hurt? They do hurt. They are quite painful at the time when she's doing them. <gasps> How do you cope when you have to take her to the vets for injections and stuff? It's, it's an event. When I took her to have her spayed, um, the vet actually refused to handle her after she woke up from the anaesthetic the vet was that scared of her. Will my pet shame vet Mark boldly go where previous vets have feared to tread and risk a ninja attack? I'm going to scruff her. Yeah, that's fine. Um, it works sometimes. OK. So the first step with any behavioural problem is to rule out medical conditions. Many medical conditions can underlie problem cat behaviour. Fever often causes irritability and aggression. Hypothyroidism, more likely in older cats, can create nervousness leading to defensive behaviours like clawing. And kidney failure causes high waste products in the blood, resulting in violent outbursts. Always see your vet about any problem behaviours to ensure your pet gets the right treatment. From what I've seen so far, it does look like a behavioural aggression case rather than a medical case. Mark wants to know how Vicky is currently managing Ninja's antics. How is she fed? She just has it left down for her in the morning, all throughout the day, and she just sort of, like, comes up to it whenever she wants it. OK, so we've got a, a situation where the food's always laid down, she's in control, you need to be the one in control of her resources. And when I say her resources, it's food. Mark suggests a training plan that involves Vicky spotting the early signs of potential aggression, tail flicking and dilated pupils. <coughs> she must then put Ninja on the floor and treat feed before Ninja's actual aggressive behaviour starts. By rewarding Ninja in this way, it will help her associate food with good behaviour. 
only really reward when she hasn't gone for you. Okay. It's going to take time, and I think in a case as complex as this, I would also seek the help of an animal behaviourist. Find out if Mark can scratch out ninjas and welcome outbursts later in the show. <laughs> the next Blushworthy pet appointment is due. Devon-based Katie and Daniel Palmer are proud owners of two three-year-old mini pigs. But whilst Penny is pig-scented perfection, her brother Rupert hogs their attention with a stinker of a problem. He's got very smelly breath. Believe it or not, Rupert was bought as a house pet. The smelly problems got so bad that we did actually used to have them inside the house and we have had to move them out of the house recently because it's just not nice. Oh, Rupert, stink. And it's not only his owners giving him the cold shoulder. The whole farm seems to avoid getting up close and personal. Rupert's a very lovely character. He's very sweet, he's very eager to please, which kind of makes his problem a bit upsetting, I think, for him, mainly, um, because people do sort of back away from him. It's down to the Pet Shame Clinic to help Rupert freshen up and make friends. Well, let's have a smell of Rupert's breath, then. Oh! He does have quite whiffy breath, he does, doesn't he? Does, doesn't he? <laughs> so, so... I thought that most pigs would have bad breath, but is Rupert's breath worse than normal? Um, well, yes. I, I'm not sure what it is about him. It's just... it's quite a pungent... Yeah. ...pungent smell. He has got exceptionally bad breath. Have you yes. ever bought him some breath freshener from the care, Mr Ray? Well, probably not the best thing for a pig, <laughs> is it? Yeah, when he's opened his mouth, you haven't done a quick spray or anything <laughs> okay, in there. So can Mark get to the root of Rupert's pig pong? So... Bad breath in pets, and not just pigs, and dogs and cats can be caused by many things. Mm. Uh, the most serious of all of them is some sort of trauma in the mouth. We'd like to pop a couple of gloves on and yeah. see if we can feel anything abnormal in the mouth. OK, yeah, that's no all problem. Right. Bad breath, or halitosis, can have many sources, but the most common causes are in the mouth. Pockets between the teeth and gums, or in gaps left by missing teeth, can fill with impacted food, allowing bacteria to fester and give off unpleasant gases. The rear of the tongue can also harbour bacteria, where a lack of fresh air makes the problem worse. More serious causes are a broken or decaying tooth, infected cut or ulcer. Persistent bad breath should always be checked out by a vet, and frequent oral inspections can nip problems in the bud. Did your wife clean his teeth? No. Pigs can have their teeth cleaned. Right. As long as you do it from a piglet age. An initial look at Rupert's gnashes reveals no obvious source for his hog breath. These teeth aren't too bad at all. But I don't want to disturb them so much that we <coughs> look at the back. So Mark considers other options. With pigs, for example, apples and grass, they ferment a lot. Yeah. They ferment a lot, they produce a lot of gas, and that gas can be sort of belched up, and that, so that yeah, smell can coat kind of. the inner surface of the mouth, and that can be what you're smelling. Okay. Mark's also keen to find out more about where Rupert comes from. From uh, Pennywell Farm, okay. down in Devon. Miniature or micro pigs like Rupert gained popularity because they look so cute as piglets that these mini porkers soon grow into much heftier adults. Pigs can be house trained but need a lot of access to outside space to indulge their rooting instincts. And in hot weather, they need access to wallow, as pigs can't sweat or pant like dogs, so can easily overheat. It's nice, you know, that your wife went to somewhere that properly breeds them yeah. and they breed healthy and happy pigs because rescue centres are already full up with abandoned dogs and unwanted yeah. cats. <laughs> you don't want really pigs, pigs to no. add to the list. Find out if Mark's initial diagnosis of a diet rich in rotting foodstuffs holds true as we catch up with Rupert later. Coming up, a terrapin adoption that's created a stinker of a problem. Take a deep breath. 
and can some specialist sticks help marshal Ninja's fighting ways? <laughs> 